makes it, it makes it easy just to write and write and write as though you were thinking and not realize it's actually the thinking and writing. So, so thinking and writing, different things. Typing and writing are different things. You know, when you're typing, that's great, you learn how to type, but that's not writing. So what is writing? Okay, but this is rule number three. This is what you've heard before too, probably. Writing is rewriting. That is really what writing is. Writing is taking the words that you first wrote on the screen and then rewriting those words so that they have an order, so that they have clarity, so that what you were trying to say is clear. That only comes from rewriting. And it comes not just from rewriting once or twice, it comes from rewriting five or six or ten times, as long as it takes. Writing is rewriting. That's rule number three. Okay. Rule number four. All writers start as readers. I learned to write from reading. You guys are going to learn, have learned, will learn, continue to learn from reading. I mean, you can practice writing, but really, you get the idea of how to write from reading. So read, 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 read as much as you can. It doesn't matter even what you read so much. We can talk about things that I prefer to read later. But read, just read, because it seeps into your pores that way. And that's how you become a writer. Okay, so rule number five. This one's a little tricky too. Writing should sound like writing. Okay? Writing should sound like writing. So what do I mean by that? We hear a lot about style in writing. We hear about a lot about writers' voice in writing. Those individual flourishes that make writing unique to that particular writer. I'm not saying those things are not important, but here's what I And, and you 
pick out one of them and a bunch of other ones kind of come with it and you just get the whole club all at once. Let's give a few examples of word balls. Due to the fact that would be kind of a word ball, you don't really need to say due to the fact that until such time as, again, you don't really need to say until such time as, or it is interesting to know that. Now, if you find yourself writing, it is interesting to know that, stop and think, okay, just, maybe that you just know it. And if it is interesting, then the reader will respond to it. And if it isn't, then me saying it is interesting to know that isn't going to make any difference. So try to avoid clumps of words that seem to stick to each other and just look for the one word that you really want to uh, use. Okay, number eight. This is somewhat related to number seven. Don't use jargon in order to make yourself sound like you know what you're talking about. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm actually going to give you an example of what I mean. It's something that came across in the newspaper a week or two ago. When Verizon purchased AOL, there was an announcement made by the Verizon executive, and he said, Verizon's vision is to provide customers with a premium digital experience based on a global multi-screen network platform. This acquisition supports our strategy to provide a cross-screen connection for consumers, creators, and advertisers to deliver that premium customer experience. Period. End quote. Okay. What is he saying? What is he saying? No one can even do. Who knows what he's what he's saying here? And that's kind of the point. He doesn't know what's going to happen with this deal. So he doesn't want to stick his neck out and say something that's definitely going to flow from this deal. Because if he's wrong, people are going to come back and say, hey, man, you said that this deal was going to you know, do this, and it did. And it actually turns out in the world, there are many people who do just that. And this is one of the things you guys as writers have to remember. Because if you're a politician, maybe it's to your advantage not to actually say what you really mean, to be a little vague, so that you can sort of like be on both sides of the defense, and if you know, anybody tries to call you on it, you can backtrack. So you end up using a lot of words, just like the lots of gentlemen used, that in the end just create kind of a big smoke screen around your meeting and don't really say anything at all. And that's the key to success in certain fields but not in the field of writing. In the field of writing, you have to say what you mean. That is what people are reading for. And again, remember, thinking, anybody can think, but when you're writing, it's public thinking, and you want to, you have to remember that the readers have a choice, and if they feel like you're waffling and not really get into what you mean, then you something else, so say what you mean. Okay, number nine. This is kind of another one that's kind of funny and sort of strange. People are always saying to you, uh, the producers, like the police of my wife, who's filming there from the background, uh, says, <laughs> uh, often someone makes a joke like, every Jew is say to us, have fun with it. Have fun with it. You know, you're having an assignment, it's due tomorrow, you're freaking out, and somebody says, have fun with it. It's like, oh man, this is the least fun thing. But here's the thing, no matter how not fun it is to write, you have to make it seem fun to me. That's one of the really hard things about writing is that it's hard. It's really not usually that fun. I mean, occasionally it can be fun, and after it's done, it can be kind of rewarded and satisfying, but the actual process is usually sort of difficult and hard. But you can't make the reading feel like the difficulty and the hard part is coming through. You have to make it light and fun and, and it has to have a wit and glee and, 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 and a little magic in it. And so that's one of the really difficult things. Don't put the work, put the work into writing the piece, but don't put a hard work feeling into the piece. Because no one kind of wants to feel like they're working in, in, in the week of the piece. Okay, so number 10. 
follow your instincts when you write. Sounds kind of obvious, but actually it gets difficult, I think, to do just that. When you're writing, I find it's hard to relax. You get kind of tense. You start feeling like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what the point is here. You know, the deadline, uh, I, I, I'm not talented enough for this. Those questions don't go away just because you know, you come to New York to write, or, or you win a prize, or you, know, you get paid for stuff. Those questions are always in the back of your mind as you're working. And you have to try to overcome them by relax and trust your instincts. And if something's interesting as you're writing, but it's not the thing you thought you were writing about, go that way. Follow your instincts. Follow your interests. Go to the place where you want to be as a writer. The place where you're engaged and where you feel interested. Don't stick to the place that you thought you were supposed to be, and in fact, you're just kind of bored and not engaged. Follow your instincts and let the writing guide you. Relax and let the writing guide you. Okay, again, we got number one. Okay, outlines. Okay, my, my advice on outlines is make an outline, but feel free to ignore it. I know outlines are, are often a good way. But I often find that when you're actually writing, you tend not to follow the outline, and sometimes it's better not to follow the outline, in fact, often, and then revise the outline as you go. Don't just say, oh my gosh, I've got to stick to my outline, because otherwise I'm you know, not going to do the piece the way it's supposed to be done. Feel free to tear up the outline your way through if it's not working for you. But, but make it out. Start early. Start early. 